Well, thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, welcome to my little part of the day. My name, as you know, is Dion Swift and welcome to my space here in Italy. Yes, I'm filming from um, Italy today. Normally, at this time of the year, I would be teaching summer schools over here. We're in the beautiful region of Abruzzo, which is kind of opposite Rome. If you imagine the, the calf of um, the Italian boot, we're on that side, the Adriatic side. Um, and so it's very, very rural and um, relatively green. We have an awful lot of um, national parks here. And we're not far from the beach. And as I say, this is normally where I would be teaching my summer schools. And sadly, they can't happen this year, but um, I'm already taking inquiries for next year and the years ahead. So if you are interested in joining me, then um, you can just visit my website. Today I have a couple of different techniques that I would like to show you. Um, back in July, when I did another demo for the craft shows, we did some silk screen printing with um, paper stencils and with a, a kind of one-off technique called um, called mono printing and these techniques come from my book which is called print and repeat and in here all the recipes that you need are listed and suppliers things like that from different locations in the world so there are suppliers lists if you're in australia or if you're in america so no matter where you are you will be able to benefit from the recipes and the information in here. I tend to work with Procyon dyes onto silk or cotton um, or linen. And today I've got another couple of really easy techniques that you will be able to do at home because that's one of the benefits I feel or one of the the key USPs, as they say, of this book is that, and in fact, all the methods that I teach, to be honest with you, there's no point in me teaching anything that you can't do at home. So all the methods that I teach are accessible in that you can do them at home. You don't need bags of equipment. You might just need a silk screen, a bit like this one, and this is quite a small dinky one, um, and a squeegee, which is around somewhere. You'll see it in a minute. And you need some basic Procyon dies, and I like to use Procyon MX dies. They come in a powder form. They're very concentrated. You can mix the colours together, so you don't need many of them because you can intermix them and create your own colours. So you're not relying on a manufacturer's colour, you're creating your own colour instead, which is much more unique, it's much more exciting, it's much more interesting, and um, I would like to encourage everybody to give it a go. So, Procyon dyes, Procyon MX dyes, and I have in my pot here, some black and today actually I was going to work just with one colour so that you can see the versatility of just mixing one colour, keeping it really simple. And we're, I'm going to show you how to, to draw um, and create more painterly techniques for your silk screen printing. Often Silk screen printing can, can become a bit blocky and a bit flat, but it needn't do at all. I like to use um, these dies in a drawn way. Those of you who follow me on my Facebook page or on my Instagram will know that I base a lot of my work on my drawing. And at the moment, and for the last couple of, well, last four or five months, 
I have been teaching a weekly drawing class because drawing and observation underpin all of my own artwork and again I feel that they are the best way to create really unique work and I know a lot of people are scared of drawing but my aim is to make it again as accessible as I possibly can to as many people as I possibly can. So you needn't be scared, you needn't be concerned. Everybody's way of seeing anything is totally unique to them. So how can you be right or wrong? It's just not possible. There is no wrong in drawing. Um, so I'm gonna use drawing today. With this dye, so this is very concentrated powdered dye. I have probably got about a good heat spoon, teaspoon, which is roughly about seven to eight grams. That's really strong of um, dye powder. And I've used black in here. And I've dissolved that with some urea, which is, no, which is a kind of a, what's known as a wetting agent, which is rather um, apt. And that means that the, the color of the dye will be kind of absorbed into the fibers and the molecules of the fabric so much better. Um, and they're in there. Now in here, this pot here is, I don't want to tip it up too much, let me get a spoon, um, is some rather gloopy Manutex. Now, Manutex starts its life looking a bit like this. Bear with. Um, this spoon's really bent because it gets shoved into this pot regularly. Can you see? It looks like this. It's powdered and you mix it just like wallpaper paste and you make a thick, gloopy slop. And in here, I also have bicarbonate of soda. Now, bicarb helps the dye color fix. I will also be steaming the fabric, and that's kind of like belt and braces. That really ensures that the color is fixed into the cloth, but that's way at the end of the process, after the, the fabric has dried. Um, but putting bicarb in here is stage one of my fixing process, okay? So, bicarb and Manutex whizzed up with a hand blender so it's nice and smooth. And I did this yesterday so that um, it's had time to kind of settle. It likes to, it likes to swell a little bit. So it's worth not being in too much of a rush and giving it a bit of time. But I am gonna add this to the colored liquid um, and just bear with me and then I'll move the camera down in a minute. And um, these together will make a thickened paste. Now, the thickened paste means that, if you can just see here, these are good mixed together. Thickened paste will not run, or the color will not run in the fabric. So it will stay roughly where I put it. And the Manutex kind of acts as a carrier to the colour. So can you see now I have got a thick gloopy, I was going to say syrupy but not syrupy, treacly, treacly paste. I'm going to keep on mixing while I speak because I want it to be as even as, I, as it can be. Now you can adjust how 
thick and gloopy you want it by adding a bit more water or a bit more Manutex, depending on what you prefer and, and <clears throat> kind of the, the, quality, the quality that you want, you know, as you get to understand and know the techniques and the, the print media, you will have your own preferences. So I have to admit, I don't tend to always measure everything every time. I'm a bit, bit of this, bit of that. Um, but I have started from set recipes. Um, but now, having done this for so many years, I'm a lot more comfortable and have my own specific mm, nuances to the quality of the, the dye paste. So you will develop your own. It doesn't take too long. And one thing can happen is that if you, if you explore loads and processes, loads and loads of processes, now I call these my um, kind of workshop butterfly people. If you dip into lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different things, it takes you that bit longer to get to understand one thing. Um, because you're, you're kind of dabbling on the surface of lots and it can be quite useful. Although difficult, I appreciate, it can be quite useful to settle on something for a while and just really get under the skin of it and get to know the process and get to know your media and get to know your tools and don't go kind of crazy on lots of stuff but really engage with one thing. I, I think that is why um, I love drawing so much because you can spend, well, a lifetime really getting to know it, getting to know your style, getting to know your own approach and you need a sketchbook or some paper and a pencil. You don't need a lot of stuff. It's what you do with it that is the crucial thing. So, that is the approach we're gonna to take today. And my paste is ready to go. I am gonna pour my paste into a squeezy bottle like, like this, okay? Um, I might do it off camera because it needs a very steady hand, although, Let's, let's, have, let's give it a go, shall we? I'm just gonna move that mucky spoon out of the way. Now, if I, let's see, if I squeeze my plastic pot, I might not be able to talk and do this. There we go, it's just gonna run in nicely. You need steady hand. And if you don't have a steady hand, then you need a funnel. Now you can get bottles like this from somewhere like Art Van Gogh. Um, or is it Craft Creations? Places like that. And the dyes you can get from, you can get them from Chemtex, you can get them from Art Van Gogh, Manutex as well. Um, you'll get them from, from those sorts of places and craft creations too. These are in the UK. Others in the book, people, in the book. What I like about my, my book, I've curated it. And when I say curated, I have um, gathered together lots of information from my students as well. So there's lots of pictures from... Uh, their studios as well as my own and stories of their own experiences of setting up a studio space like a basic studio space at home because that's all you need you don't need anything uber fancy right so paste in a drawing thing so any kind of jar you want bottle you want or you could simply brush this on if you prefer. Now, today I am going to work from, all my pages have fallen out, I'm going to work from this drawing. Um, well, I might work from a couple actually, but predominantly this drawing. 
As I said, I have been teaching weekly drawing classes and this was one of the pieces um, that I focused on in my landscape week. Um, most of my work or a large proportion of my work is based around landscapes and I really like to base my work on drawing. So I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna have this near me so that I can refer to it all the time. And I'm gonna tilt you down so that you can see what I'm doing down here on the surface. So, so it may be upside down for you now, but look, I have two, two small screens um, because I might do a couple of these, see how I get on. And let's just tip this up and see what it, how it comes out. I am working on, look, the, the screen is open. There's no imagery on here. There's remnants of previous bits of work, um, but there is no actual design. I can look through the screen and see quite clearly that it's not blocked. This red area around here is the glue that holds the mesh of the screen in place um, so that you don't need any staples. And there's a bit of red glue around here as well, which actually is great because it prevents all of the, the manky bits of dye creeping in underneath the frame and it keeps the mesh, the silk screen mesh, really taut and tight. Can you hear that? It should be drum-like. Some of the, um, maybe the cheaper versions of screens or the older versions of screens have the mesh stapled and it really isn't as good in my opinion. Um, right, let's just get this dye running. It's quite thick, so it's not gonna pour out. I am working straight on top of my screen. And I'm following this, and actually when I print it, it's gonna print like this, so it's gonna be the other way around, but that's okay. I'm cool with that. And I have deliberately chosen an image that um, is pretty linear, knowing that, knowing what the process holds for me and what it can do for me. And I am using the dye in the bottle just as if it were a pencil. And this is the thickened dye. And in places, I'm gonna make it a bit thicker. Now this process is called breakdown printing. Some of you may have heard it before. You may have done it before. You may have done it in quite a different way because my approach is definitely one that, as I said, comes from a, a drawn perspective rather than pattern. But actually, this will make pattern as well. And sometimes I'm not actually putting any extra ink on. I am smearing and spreading what I've already got on the screen. And one thing that I really quite enjoy is that I don't know how this is gonna come out. I don't know how it's going to print because what's on the screen at the minute is not what will actually um, be present on the fabric when I print this later on once it's dried. In fact, it, well, you just wait and see. You'll have to bear with me till the bitter end this morning so that you can see the results of this. And you know, I'm going to leave that one like that. It doesn't seem like I've done very much to it. Let me turn it around for you. Okay, can you see? This is my drawing in black 
Magnetech in black Procyon, thick and Procyon. Okay, so this is the thickened dye, and I'm going to leave this to dry. I'm going to do another one actually because it's always handy when you when you've um, when you've got going, you may as well do a few more. So let me flick through my my sketchbook and find another. Um, what shall I go with? Having a sketchbook means that you are never stuck with something to do. The difficulty when you have a full sketchbook is deciding which element to work from. Um, but at least you've got plenty of choice. It's when you haven't got choice that um, things become difficult. Let me see. I think I might go back to another landscape back here. Possibly that one. You can tell I like a bit of perspective in my drawings, but I think actually there was one. Where's it gone? There's a nice curve in this one. I'm going to go for this, okay? So, same again. If I hold my bottle up fairly vertically, what happens is it creates a vacuum in the bottle and um, the, the paste can't pour out. So, and actually my paste is pretty thick today. The farmhouse over here, bit of shadow on the side of it. Now, if I don't um, do an exact version of this particular landscape, honestly, who's going to be policing that? Because actually, my, pay, my screen is not the same proportions as the page. The page is square, my screen is slightly rectangular. And what starts to happen is that the process of printing takes over. You started with drawing, process of drawing, the process of observation, and then we get into a slightly more playful zone with print. And we let the properties of the print start to start to speak and have their say. So I'm spreading this a little bit. I'm not actually putting any more on now, but I'm almost, I suppose you could say, adding texture and spreading out what I've got. And I'm using the side of the nozzle on this bottle. I wouldn't mind having a finer nibbed bottle, but I haven't got one to hand. So I am using what I've got. I don't want to be one of those poor workmen or poor workwomen who blames their tools want to get on and um, explore and experiment with what I've got. Spread this out. And I want this um, smear of oil bar here that I want to try and articulate the movement of that smearing of the surface texture on my original drawing. So I started observing the landscape, but now I'm actually observing my observation of the landscape to translate into 
this um, silk screen here. And so I'm going to leave that one there for now. Let me turn it around so that you can see. Again, the paste is pretty thick, so I'm happy to move it around and it not run off the screen. But when I leave it to dry, I'm going to leave it horizontally so that it doesn't drip. I'm quite fortunate that I've got two screens so that I can set up a couple of pieces of work at the same time. Um, these are just about, mm, yeah, they're just about A4 in size, these screens, which means they're really easy to put in a, an ordinary sink and I don't need a big washout area. So very convenient indeed. And you'll see here that they are 34T, that's the mesh count or the thread count. 34 threads. Oh, I think that might be per centimetre in new money, but it could be per inch, but I think it's centimetre. Um, and that is the, the standard mesh count for a textile screen. Okay. I'm going to leave these to dry now while I show you the next process that I've got in store for you. So let me just tuck these out the way. While they're drying, I would like to show you another technique that you can do with exactly the same paste. So make one thing do two or maybe three or four things. You can adapt as you go. On my table in front of me, I have a piece of silk habitat and I'm going to stick this down just a little bit more around the edges. I like, it's a scarf length and so it's about two meters long. I like a long scarf. I'm very tall and um, my table surface is in this instance a piece of formica um, because it's lightweight, flexible and cleanable. So I can wipe it down nice and easily and I want to, my one problem with it is masking tape, maybe it's the heat, but masking tape doesn't always like to stick. Maybe my masking tape's a bit old, but you want to get, you want to hold down your fabric as evenly as you can a little line underneath there as evenly and as uh, controlled as you can as I get to different areas of the scarf I will um, retape and then uh, we need a subject we need something to work from for this scarf and a few weeks back maybe a few months I have lost track of time recently I did a a drawing or a painting maybe you could call it. I did a scarf anyway, started painting a scarf from the cherry trees, inspired by the cherry trees at um, my last house. We moved house recently and there was some lovely cherry trees that I left there. Here in Italy we have olive trees so it seemed very apt to be able to show you just how good our olives are looking this year. We don't have many and they're very young, but the last few years there's been a bug on the olives um, and so we haven't had anything quite as healthy as this. But I would like to use this as my inspiration to draw a scarf to show you. It's going to be in black and white and I may decide to add some, to add some more colour to it later on, but I'll, I'll get through the black and white stage first. So let me tilt you down. So, and what I'm going to do is literally use my olives as the visual inspiration to draw. So here we go. Um, bear in mind, again, the paste in my bottle 
is very thick and if I hold the bottle upright the sorry struggling to to work concentrate and talk at the same time it's very challenging um, the paste won't run out because it's so thick I do need to give the bottle a little squeeze every now and then I'm going to move along here a bit more get one of those lovely big olives in there another one here now nobody is going to be looking at this olive branch again in the same lighting conditions on the same day in the same way as I am now and so Woe betide them if they try and challenge my my drawing and say, oh, that's not right. That just cannot happen. So I am, um, when I draw, I keep my eyes fixed on my subject all the information that I am getting then is uh, the information that I need to make a reasonably accurate drawing. A, oh, is there another olive there? I've started now, there is now. I'm going to leave this drawing very much as a line drawing, I think, today. Um, but you could fill in areas and obviously you could um, you could actually use a lot of other colors as well if you wanted to I wanted to show you really though how simple you can make your work with uh, Procyon dies. It does not need to be complicated and um, I think again as I said people can get quite scared of drawing, people can be scared of dyeing fabrics um, but there is absolutely no need to be because it can be as simple as you want it to be and I started really considering accessible teaching or, or teaching accessible methods after spending time working at a university where I was teaching print and um, a lot of the, the young people who left the university sadly very very talented but unable to access all the equipment that they'd been used to using while at uni. And so they found it incredibly difficult to carry on with their work. Um, so I wanted to find ways that were much more approachable and, and useful to everybody. Gone off screen there, so I'm gonna do this bit here let me just twizzle you across a little bit and you can follow me. There we go. Let's straighten that off a little bit. So keeping the, the bottle upright. And um, I'm not going to do anything now with this particular piece of fabric. I'm not going to move it until it's dry. There's just too great a risk of the, um, 
the print pace moving. So I'm going to leave it be and not fiddle because things will run. Well, not run, but transfer and shift about. As I say, the so, bits I'll do at either end, I will do those later. And um, I will now go and get the dried screens from earlier on, the, the screens for the breakdown printing, because I really want to show you what they look like when they print as well, because they're really exciting. You never know what you're going to get. And, um, oh, for me, that's kind of one of the wonders of what we all do for the, re the reason we, we love textiles. Well, it is the reason I love textiles or any creative process, actually. The unexpected, the unknown, and learning every time I do something new. So I'd quickly go and bob and get those screens. Two secs. My original screens are kind of nearly dry. I have to admit, I'm a little bit impatient and running out of time. So I am going to print with at least this one. This one's slightly drier. Can you see this one still has some damp patches on it? I don't know if you can see that through the, with the lights. Ideally, they should be completely dry, but um, time is limited. There are so many other people that you want to watch today and I only have a certain amount of allocated time, so I'm gonna crack on. Um, I quickly changed my work surface and I've put down a piece of, of uh, fabric. It's 100% cotton and it's often known as tea, um, tea towel fabric. It's a quality of fabric that I, I just particularly like. Um, it's not overly special, but I don't know. You know, when you like something, you like something. I am putting a little reservoir of tape around my screen. Can you see that? And um, this will give me a nice crisp edge to my print. Now, officially, it's this way up, but I'm actually gonna print it this way up. So, I want a couple of prints just as the image, as the, as the landscape. And then I'm going to do a few more prints where I print over the top of one another. So this goes down and I've, remember I've put the, the paint on the, the kind of outside of the screen, but I'm going to put this down onto the fabric and then not move it because I have got some damp spots. I shouldn't really have done that but I have. Let me tilt you down so that you can see. Bring you down. Bring you down to there. So look, my tabletop's slightly different. Um, and it's got a little bit of spring to it, this table surface. It's a piece of vinyl with a little bit of sponging in the back so <clears throat> I can wipe it down. You see, I put uh, a good run, a good gloop of paste. And with my squeegee fairly vertical, I'm gonna run that across the screen. Now, <clears throat> the paste I'm using is the same as before. It is the Magnatex. It hasn't got any color in it. You could put color in it but I quite want this to be black and white. I'm not rushing because the Manutex is going to start to break down the paste that's dried on the screen. So when I press down again now, some of that original drawing will have transferred itself very delicately onto my fabric and I'm going to do another one of those. Every time I do this, so that's my distribution of paste, every time I do this, a little bit more of the image that's on the screen will break down, rehydrate, 
break down and be transferred onto the fabric. That black blob there is the wet dye that I'd been too impatient to allow to dry. But everything else has this lovely halo all around it. So while I've been chatting, this screen has had kind of 30 seconds or so to break down, hence the name. Then we press and squeegee through the broken down ink and imagery. So that one is a little bit stronger. Can you see? Now, I, I quite want to show you the, um, I'm gonna put this one in the middle. I quite want to show you the variants of the breaking down. And if I don't rush, you, you'll get more of the breakdown effect. And like I say, you could do these kind of on top of one another in different directions to get a textural effect if you wanted to. Or as I'm doing here, kind of for the illustration, you can do them individually. So a little bit more has broken down there. And we've got a load of paste on the screen. I will squeegee that back and just let it, let it do its job for a little while. Let it break down, let it rehydrate this image. Bearing in mind this image is is thick and dry, it takes a little bit longer. Last time I did a demo for you, we were working with um, with Manutex Monoprinting and we were working with liquid dyes on the screen and they broke down a lot quicker. This does not. Now one of the benefits here is that as you break down the screen, it's cleaning it off for you at the same time. So can you see there is less and less imagery left on the screen because look, it's being transferred down here instead. So number one, number two, number three, number four. Let's do five and six. And you can see the impact. This technique is really great if you're doing something in a, in a series um, or you want to see progression. So, one more. I'm keeping my, foot, my squeegee, fairly vertical look, and then pressing down and using the rubber part of the squeegee here to do the work for me. And cleaning the screen down as I push the paste through. Oh, a lot went through that time. Look, less and less on the screen, all going onto the fabric. In black and white, you can see this re happen really easily. Another reason I chose black and white. Right. We'll just try and get rid of the rest of that and it'll make my cleaning job a lot easier. Um, I will be able to clean these with soap and water in the sink, nice and easy. Sometimes a scrubbing brush because some of the, the dried on ink can be very stubborn and um, then I can leave it in the sun to dry. So let's try this last one. I'm going to give it one more pull. Every time I move the, the squeegee across the screen, it's called a pull. So one more pull. And peel that off there. Oh, hardly anything left on the screen this time. So it's left me a lovely image here. Quite different from all the rest. But this is where we started, look. And this is where we've ended up. So the first one was kind of almost a negative of the original drawing. And if you remember, I took this image from a landscape that I'd drawn back in Yorkshire. Um, 
and through the progression of the breakdown of the image as we've printed, we've got to this image here. So a lovely process, I think you'll agree. It gives some really interesting results. These pieces will be ideal for me to work into with stitch, should I choose, or for them to be merely enjoyed as they are. It could be that they become part of a piece of quilt making or another textile project. The large drawn scarf will also get processed in the same way as these. So they will be steamed for about half an hour in a big bullet steamer that I have and then carefully washed out. And I will put them through the washing machine to ensure that all the excess dye has gone and they are completely fast, colour fast. I really hope that you've enjoyed my demo today. Do not forget that I have this um, really useful book, Print and Repeat, with recipes and techniques from me and stories from a collection of my students from around the world who've learned to silk screen print with me. You can buy this on my website for £10 with free postage in the UK, but I will ship anywhere in the world. And you can also um, find my accessible silk screen printing workshop, which is a self-directed online workshop as well. And there are drawing for textiles workshops. There are sketchbook workshops, developing sketchbooks workshops. There's a weekly drawing class, um, part one of which started on Thursday, but you can still join in and catch up because you don't need to watch everything live. It's got a catch up facility. And we have a lovely Facebook group so that there's a great community of textilers and students online who are again from around the world isn't this technology thing brilliant um i would love it if you join me um if you like the look of italy then um, obviously i have i've got some summer schools happening in the next few years and you will find all the information on my website dionswift.com I thank you very much for joining me and I will hand you back to Lynette. Have the most fabulous day or most fabulous weekend watching and enjoying, maybe joining in on some of the demos and instructions. Just generally be inspired by everything that's in front of you. I look forward to connecting with you again. Bye for now. Have an absolutely fabulous day. Ci vediamo presto. Ciao ciao.